All right, here's a short video on slopes. Um, don't forget, we're still in 7.2. Last class, we uh, into 7.2, talked about your slopes, not your slopes, your intercepts, graphing using intercepts and horizontal lines, vertical lines as well. So now we're talking about slopes. Remember, we talked about our three different ways of actually graphing your linear equations. We had graphing using your XY chart, graphing using your intercepts, and now we're looking at graphing using your slopes. All right, once again, still in 7.2. We're going to finish off 7.2 today with this lecture. Uh, M represents slopes. Could not use S because S is used in other places for other things. So M is going to represent your slope. And here we have a formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or you can do y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. You just have to make sure you stay consistent in how you plug in your values. If you use y2 first on top, make sure you use x2 first down bottom. Or if you use y1 first up top, make sure you use x1 first down bottom. As long as you stay consistent, um, you'll get, still get the same result. And then also a part of the relationship is rise over run, and we'll use that when we actually get to the graphing part. Okay, so x1, y1, x2, y2 comes from any two points on your line. So here we have a little diagram uh, emphasizing that. So x1, y1 is one point on the line, x2, y2 will be another point on the line. So any two points on the line will give you the slope for that line. You'll be able to calculate the slope for that line. All right. So if we want to find a slope, so and they give us these two points, basically you want to find the slope of the line that contains these two points. Negative two, four, negative two, negative four, and then three, negative five. So the best thing to do is to go ahead and initially label which point you're calling point one, which point you're calling point two. Normally, the first one I see I call point one, second one point two, but it doesn't matter as long as you stay consistent. This is just x1, y1. This one's x2, y2. Okay. Now I'm going to show you in this first one, both of these I'm going to do it with y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Then I'm going to calculate it y1 minus y2 or x1 minus x2, just to show you that no matter which way you do it, you'll still get the same result. Um, but you do not have to calculate both of them each time. All you have to do is do it one way. Okay. So let's look at this first one, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is negative 5. Y1 is negative 4. So that's what we have here up top. And then x2 is 3, x1 is negative 2. So make sure you don't lose a negative in each case. Notice you have minus in the formula, and we plug in negative 4. And then we also plug in negative 2. Make sure you don't lose a negative. OK. So we have negative 5 minus negative 4 on top, 3 minus negative 2 on bottom. Also take note that whenever you have a negative to a negative, that turns positive. So I just rewrote that here negative five plus four over three plus two. And that will give me negative one over five. Okay. Now doing it the other way. Y1 minus Y2 over X1 minus X2. All you do is plugging in at Y1 first and then Y2. So it's negative four minus negative five. And then we have on bottom X1 minus X2. That's negative two minus three. Do the calculation that ends up giving us one over negative five, which is the same thing as negative one fifth. All right. So just showing you that as long as you stay consistent, you'll still get the same result. All right. So let's do it at least one more time. Five, negative six. Is our first point, eight, three is the second point. And that's how I label it right here. So we do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 is three, y1 is negative six. Once again, make sure you don't lose the negative. Down bottom, x2 is eight, x1 is five. So do your calculations, negative to a negative turns positive. So that's three plus six, which is nine on top. On bottom, eight minus five is three. 
So nine divided by three is three, and that would be your slope. All right. Okay, the behaviors of your slopes. There are four major ways that your slope could behave. And here they are. So if you have your line and you, you always read your line from left to right, if you're following it from left to right and it goes up, then your slope is positive. All right. If you're reading it from left to right and it goes down, your slope is negative. If it's a horizontal line, your slope is zero. If it's a vertical line, your slope is undefined. All right. Those are your four major behaviors of your slope. Positive, negative, zero for horizontal line, and then undefined for a vertical line. Okay, so you guys don't have parallel and perpendicular lines, you okay? So the next thing that we're looking at is graphing using your slopes. So remember I mentioned that rise over run is what we would use in reference to your slope when it comes to graphing. So your rise represents your up or down move. Your run represents right or left. And so what would dictate whether we go up or down, right or left would be the fact that your number is positive or negative. So we have positive moves and negative moves. And so positive moves will be up and right, negative moves down and left. Okay. So if I have positive three fourths, that's positive three over positive four. That means I'm making two positive moves. That means I'm gonna go up three, right four. All right. Next one, if I have negative five over seven, go negative five sevenths. So notice that negative five over seven and five over negative seven, they are the exact same thing. So you have to make a decision on where you're gonna assign your negative. The negative doesn't go to, bot, I mean to uh, both of them, to the top and bottom, because negative over negative is a positive. So that negative can only go to one or the other. I always say, just give it to the top. And that, that's fine. So you're talking about a uh, negative five over a positive seven, but you also could do a positive five over a negative seven. So if you look at what we have here, when you look at it, this is your starting point. If I go down five, right seven, that'll put me right here. Or if I go up five, left seven, that'll put me right here. Either way, you see, we, see we still have the same line that's being generated. So whether you give the negative to the top or give the negative to the bottom, it does not matter, it will still create the same line. You just have to make sure you don't give the negative to both numbers, it's either one or the other. So once again, just emphasizing the moves, negative five over positive seven would be down five, right seven. Positive five over negative seven would be up five, left seven. All right. So we'll also use what we call the slope intercept form y equal to mx plus b. So if our equation is solved for y, for as far as our linear equations are concerned, if it's solved for y, then the number that's sitting right in front of x that's attached to x is your slope. The other number is your y-intercept. Remember, we talked about y-intercepts last class, and that's going to help us out when it comes to graphing in a second. So just uh, two examples as to how you would extract your information from the equation. We have y equal to 2 thirds x plus 1. So what's sitting in front of x or what's attached to your x is your slope. Is, so notice our slope is 2 thirds. Your slope is not 2 thirds x. Uh, a lot of people make that mistake. x is not a part of your slope. It's just the number. So the 2 thirds that's sitting in front of the x is your slope. And then the other number is your y-intercept. That's 1. Right. Down here, negative 18 thirds negative 8 thirteenths x minus 5. So once again, what's attached to x is your slope. So that's negative 8 thirteenths. And then the other number is your y-intercept. So that's negative 5. So you have to hold true to all negative signs, minus signs. Um, they do carry a value, and they need to stay attached to your numbers. 
So that's why we have a negative five and a negative eight thirteenths. All right. So steps to graphing using your slopes. Notice the first step is to plot your y-intercept first. Um, that's where a lot of people make a mistake. They don't plot that first, and then they try to create a point from uh, the origin. So be careful here. You plot your intercept first, and then you generate another point from that y-intercept, not from the origin. Remember, your slope is not a point. So we're not going to the origin for your slope. Your slope is just a set of directions telling you to go up, down, left, or right. And so we're going to plot our y-intercept, and then from the y-intercept, we're going to go up, left, or whatever the case may be. OK? All right, so let's try it. If I have that y equal to 2 thirds x minus 1, so I already have the information up here, so we'll just walk through it. So what's in front of x or what's attached to x is your slope. That's a positive 2 thirds. Minus 1 is your y-intercept. OK? So I have a positive 2 over positive 3. Um, that is my slope. So I'm going to go up two, right three. Those are my directions, all positive moves. Now, the coordinates of my y-intercept is always going to be zero for your x. Don't forget, we talked about that last class. Your y-intercept always has x as zero. So that's why my coordinates here is zero, negative one. Right. So graph your y-intercept. Graph that first. Your y-intercept, don't forget, is on your y-axis. It's where the line intercepts the y-axis. So it should be on your y-axis. You don't move right or left, but you go down one. So you graph that first. And then from your y-intercept, you go up to right three. All right, and so that's how we get our line. Those are our two points. And that's how you use slopes to graph. I keep wanting to say, are there any questions? Uh, so you still having a live audience, right? So let's do it one more time. OK, so we got negative 1 fourth x plus 3. Negative 1 fourth is your slope. And then the 3, the positive 3, is your y-intercept. Mm -hmm. So remember, I always say, if you got a negative fraction, go ahead and give it a negative to the top number and be done with it. So that's a negative one over a positive four. I'm gonna go down one for my negative move, then write four, because that four is positive. And then my y-intercept, once again, whenever you're looking at the coordinates of your y-intercept, x is always zero. So that's why we have zero, three here. So you graph zero, three first. So you go to your y-axis and go up three, and then from your y-intercept, you go down one, right four. And that'll give us our second point, and that's our line. All right, I think this is, oh, we can do this one too, all right. So that's that one, so let's look at this one. So. These last two, notice that they were already solved for y, OK? Now, if your equation is not solved for y, you do want to do that uh, for yourself so that you'll be able to pick out what your slope is and uh, graph using your slope, your slope information. So here we have 5x plus 2y equal to 8. All right, so we want to solve this equation for y. We want to get y by itself. First thing we'll do is subtract 5x from both sides. 5x cancels on the left, leaving me with 2y equal to negative 5x over, uh, not for negative 5x plus 8. Okay. Still want to get it in this form. So we need to get that 2 off of y. So we'll divide both sides by 2. Now, when you want to simplify this side over here, that 2 has to go into each term that's in the numerator. So you can't just give it to the 8 and not give it to the 5. So that's what we have right here negative 5x over 2 plus 8 over two, simplify that, that'll be negative five over two x, or negative five x over two, whichever way you wanna say it, eight over two is four. And so now we can pick out our information 
extract that information from the equation. Slope is negative five over two, y-intercept is four. So that's a negative five over positive two. I'll go down five, right two. My y-intercept is zero four. Coordinates of your y-intercept will always have x at zero. All right. So once again, graph your y-intercept first. Zero, four, you go to your y-axis, go up four. Then from there, we're gonna go down five and right two. So right here, down five, right two. And that's our second point. And that gives us our line. So make sure you count each one of your tick marks as you go down and then do the same thing as you go to the right and you'll be all right. All right, so try the stuff out. See if you have any questions and I will see you guys on the next class. Take care.